Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Streamlining AAV Characterization with Automated Mass Photometry. I'm Jeannie Linky Northrup, and I'm a Managing Editor of Special Projects, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are pleased to bring you this webcast presented by Biofarm International and sponsored by Refine. Refine pioneers analytical instruments that put molecular mass measurement capabilities within easy reach for scientists. Their unique products measure the mass of individual proteins, nucleic acids, complexes, and viruses, providing vital insights for scientific discovery, R&D, and therapeutics production. Refine instruments feature mass photometry technology, which uses light to quantify the mass of single particles in a solution without labels. Providing intuitive data in minutes, mass photometry helps scientists solve their research questions, optimize R&D processes, and focus on innovation. Before we begin with today's uh, live broadcast, there are just a few important announcements I'd like to make. This webcast is designed to be interactive, and so we encourage you to kindly ask questions as you feel necessary during the event. You can submit your questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found at the bottom of the video player. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small icon in the bottom right corner of your media player. The slides will automatically advance during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation, please click on the question mark help widget in the top right of your presentation window. I would now like to introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. Zvea Cheeseman. Zvea Cheeseman is the Director of Product Management for Cell and Gene Therapy at Refine responsible for products targeted for the biopharma industry. She holds a PhD in single molecule biophysics and has five years experience in the biopharma industry. She has a keen interest in pushing the boundaries of biomolecular analysis to eventually enable real-time release of biomolecular drugs. Zvea, thank you so much for your time today. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. Please feel free to begin. Thank you very much for the kind introduction and welcome everyone also from my side. As mentioned today, we would want to speak about AAVs. And when speaking about AAVs, we also need to speak about one of the biggest analytical challenges in the manufacturing of AAVs, which is to determine whether the AAV um, particles are empty or full. That is whether or not they carry the transgene, the DNA inside. Often, manu manufacturing processes lead to high amounts of empty AAVs, partic AAV particles in the process, and this is harmful for several reasons. Firstly, this can lead to receptor binding competition and capsule pre precipitation, um, therefore reducing the efficiency. Um, it also leads to increased immune responses because you need higher doses of the virus, and obviously it increases the cost of goods produced. Now, what would an analytical solution look like that can solve the, this problem? It should be fast it be fast and accurate in determining the empty, full, and the partial populations. It should use very low sample volume and particle concentrations. It should be applica applicable at different purification stages and for all serotypes. And lastly, it must be easy to use, ideally in a benchtop instrument with low operational costs. And we think at Refine that mass photometry can solve this technology gap. Now let me quickly explain how mass photometry works. So basically here we have a glass slide with our sample that you just drop in solution on top of the microscope. You see here the empty and the full AAVs. And what we are looking at is um, two different signals. So we have a laser com that comes from the bottom and we look at both the scattering of molecules when they come to the surface, single molecules, and also the reflected light, the laser light that's reflected by the glass surface. Now the reflection will remain constant over the period of the measurement. However, the scattering light, the, the amount of scattering light changes 
with the optical density, the refractive index of the scattering molecule, and the number of, uh, of atoms inside that molecule. And therefore, these two together relate to mass. So basically, what we're doing is we look at the um, interference of the scattered light and the reflected light, and this gives us these interference patterns. Um, every single dot that you can see here, that is what we see on the camera chip, um, corresponds to a single molecule, a single AAV molecule in this case. Um, and the how, how dark the contrast is inside, the intensity of the contrast, that relates to the amount of scattering and therefore to the mass. So what we do is we analyze the contrast inside these, um, um, these dots. And what we will get as a result is the counts over the contrast initially. And then you can calibrate the system with one known protein for AAV. You can, for example, use empty AAVs. Um, and then you can, you, the output is a histogram with counts over molecular weight. Now, this technology is especially useful for AAVs uh, because empty and full AAVs have the same size. So any technology that looks at uh, sizing molecules to distinguish them will not distinguish empty from full AAVs. However, full AAVs have the DNA inside, which empty AAVs do not have, and that weighs about a megadalton, depending on its length. So um, we can distinguish them because they have very different molecular weights. We can also distinguish um, the, the, the intact AAVs from uh, debris and, and free DNA because that has lower molecular weight. So here, the histogram is a typical uh, measurement with AAVs. You can see there's one peak at 3.7 megadalton uh, approximately, which is corresponds to the empty uh, viral particles. And then you see another peak, which corresponds to the full AAVs that is about a megadalton um, higher in molecular weight. You can also see that there seems to be a population in between. This is uh, partials. We'll speak about that later in the presentation. Now we have an instrument that is dedicated to the measurement of AAVs, and that is called the SAMXMP. The technology is optimized for the mass range relevant for AAVs, that is 3 to 6 megadalton. The hardware is also optimized for the use with AAVs, um, so we um, make sure that it's compatible with contamination um, processes um, and that nothing can, nothing can drop into the instrument. We also have a software that is optimized for a quick and easy assessment of the empty full ratios of your AAV product. Now, I promised that uh, we would speak about um, automation today. Um, so we now also um, will bring in, in beginning of next year automation of mass photometry on AAVs to the market, which is then called the SAMXMP Auto. I go into details of this instrument um, in just a little moment, but I'd like to um, underline that the system inside is the SAMXMP. So the performance of the mass photometer is determined by the SAMXMP. So I'd like to start with showing you some data that the, were acquired on the SAMXMP for you to appreciate what the system can do. So starting off with um, the measurement of different empty full ratios, starting from 100% empty, this peak, to 100%, almost 100% full, which is the black measurement. So you can see that we see uh, on the left, the empty peak, on the right, the full peak. From that, we calculate, we, we did this by just mixing the empty and full within a certain ratio. Um, and then we measured the, the empty full ratio from the system. And the result of this you can see here. So here we plotted the predicted loading based on our mixing um, versus the loading measured by the mass photometer. And you can see that it's um, very accurate based on the midline, but also it's a really nice linear relationship all the way from zero to 100%, showing that we can accurately determine the empty full ratio across the entire range from zero to 100% full. As mentioned, we can also look at partials. Um, partials typically do not give a nice Gaussian distribution. That makes a lot of sense because they are of different DNA length. They don't have just one defined length. Um, so partials typically show up as some sort of smear in between the empty and full measurement, as you can see it here. Um, in this case, uh, this is data from, from a customer. Um, they also extracted the 
AAV, the DNA inside the AAVs and ran it on a gel. Here you can see that here is the full length DNA and very faintly, but it's visible that there are other bands below here um, showing the, the shorter DNA fragments that we can see inside the partial population here. The partial population was also benchmarked uh, with um, size exclusion chromatography followed by multi-angle light scattering. Um, where both of them came, the SEGMALs, both as, as well as mass photometry, came up with very similar values. And something else we can measure is not just empty and full, but also overfilled particles. Uh, so here you see that we see three really nicely Gaussian distributed um, populations. Um, the empty and the full one are at the mass values that we expected, but then we saw another a third population, which is on higher um, mass. That means that it must be loaded with more DNA. Um, and indeed, we, have, we got this result with two different customers. Um, and the second customer, the collaborator B here, um, they uh, confirmed that inside this population, they had twice the vector genome. So those are overfilled particles that can also be seen on the SAMUX. Now, speaking about even higher masses, the SAMUX can also see aggregates. So what we've done here is we've taken um, a commercial sample, AAV, um, and we treated it really poorly in order to induce aggregation. Unfortunately, as you can see, we didn't, didn't succeed a lot. So what we've done here is we've taken the mass of one empty AAV and we plotted the ranges for two, three, four, and five AAV here in, in, in this gray color. And then we looked at whether we see events in, so whether we can detect molecule of the mass that fall in, in, in this range of the multiples of the AAVs. Um, and indeed, at two at the dimer population, we see a really nice population that can still be fit with the Gaussian. Um, at higher aggregation um, numbers, however, we did not see many events. So at this point, we can say that we can see aggregation. We do not really know at this point whether we can quantify them because we don't have a sample that is aggregated enough. So if you have something that really aggregates well, please do get in touch with us if you're interested to um, collaborating on this. Now, you might also be aware that some analytical technologies to measure AAVs are serotype dependent. And once you have optimized the protocol for one serotype, you need to you have a new serotype now, and then you need to redo the entire um, analytical workflow. We've tested uh, many different uh, serotypes on the SAMXMP, and we have not seen any differences between them. Um, so it's really serotype agnostic. Here you can see our internal data where we tested AV5, 6, 8, and DJ, uh, and all of them behaved just fine. We also had collaborators at the Utrecht University in the Netherlands, and um, they also measured two different AV8 vectors and an AV5 vector, um, and so no, no, no complications, no differences between them. Uh, interestingly, this lab, that is the lab of Albert Hegg, they are experts in um, charge detection mass spectrometry. And they took this vector um, that we measured on the mass uh, photometer and measured it in the mass spectrometer. And they found, we, well, we measured 3.81 kilodalton, um, megadalton, sorry, they measured 3.83, showing that we have really high mass accuracy too. Some more benchmarking. Uh, we benchmarked the empty full ratio um, obtained with a SAMUX MP against the gold standards, which is cryo TEM and AUC. This was done together in collaboration with the cell and gene therapy catapult in London. And you can see that across you know, different empty full ratios from six to 60% full, um, we have very similar results to cryo TEM and AUC showing that um, our measurement is accurate. We also have done a similar study with uh, Farmeron, where they compared um, two samples with the SAMUX MP um, against cryo TM and AUC. And here you see two, also at very high um, full ratios, sorry, that's potentially empty, at very um, high empty ratios, uh, we, can, we can nicely compare with benchmark, uh, with the, the gold standards. 
No, this is a slide that I'm always really excited to show um, because we don't just we cannot just measure AAVs when they are super purified, but we can actually measure them in process. So what you see here is a purification process that was monitored using the SAMOX MP. So firstly, uh, the first sample that you see here is um, after clarification. So it's crude extract with the cells removed. And what we can see, the dark one here is the M is where we expect the empty AAVs to show up, and the light blue one is where the full AAVs are. So in the crude extract, you can see a nice empty population. Uh, unfortunately, in this process, it looks like you didn't have a lot of full um, AAVs. But what you can also appreciate that we have this um, quite big population at low molecular weight. Um, this is uh, cell debris and, and host cell proteins and so on, so contaminations that we would expect to be still in the uh, clarified um, material. Now, the, uh, this material was now loaded onto an affinity column where the AAV is bind to, um, and this is the flow through. This is what came out, came out after it. And here you can see that we have this big peak um, of low molecular weight, which is all the contaminations other than AVs that fl flew through the, the column. But we see that there's nothing here at the higher molecular weight where we expect AVs, confirming that the AVs have bound to the column. Now let's proceed to the illusions. We have seven different illusions shown here. And we can see how first the empty AVs come off. So the first illusions have basically no full AVs. Um, and now the amount of full AAVs is increasing. So the illusion four has the highest amount of full AAVs um, with respect to the empty ones. Um, so this you can see here that we can nicely um, measure through throughout the purification process, and we can um, measure both unpurified and purified samples. Obviously, the resolution is going to be better um, the more pure the product is, but we can measure and purified too. So now coming to the automation, I hope that I have shown you that the SAMOX MP um, is really great because it doesn't consume a lot of samples. We need for this manual system 10 to 20 microliters of um, a concentration of 10 to the power of 11 particles per milliliter. That is combined the empty and the full. It is a very fast measurement. Um, from dropping the sample to receiving your analysis, it takes you less than five minutes. Um, you don't need specific sample preparations other than adjusting the temp the concentration to what's mentioned up here. Um, and it's very really easy to use. We typically train a new operator in less than a day. But now what we've done is we added a pipetting robot that combines the sensitivity and simplicity of mass photometry with the ease and efficiency of automation. So what we receive with this product called Samox Auto is an automated operation. You can run multiple samples at once. And because we now have a robot rather than a person pipetting, we also show increased repeatability and consistency. Now let's have a closer look at the system. So the um, Samox mass photometer sits in this bottom drawer down here. It's permanently mounted to the mass photometer though, cannot manually use it. Um, and here is a close up of the workspace in here, that this door closes and then you have a laser safe system. Now here in the close up, you can see here's the objective. Here is where you drop your sample, um, where the measurement takes place. Here you have fresh pipettes, a waste and a 96 well plate where you supply both your buffer and your samples. And here you see that, that the robot, the pipette. So with this system, you have automated characterization of AAVs. It measures up to 24 samples in uh, about one and a half hours. So one slide can take 24 samples. And after the 24 samples, you remove the slide, place a new one manually, and you can run another 24 samples. Um, as the system down here is the SAMOX MP, uh, the, the SAMOX MP auto can um, be bought as a new system, but we can also retrofit it on any SAMX MP that's in the market. And it's really easy to use uh, and give you, gives you increased data reproducibility, which I would like to show you now on the next slide. So what you see here is um, an AAV sample with, I'm just looking at about 70% uh, empty 
and here's the full population. And this is 22 runs that we have uh, performed on the auto. So we would always recommend, we have 24 wells to measure in. We recommend to use the first and the last one as a calibrant, and then you have 10, 22 measurements in between, and also a quality control because of the calibrants. So 22 measurements overlay, this is what they look like. Now we have a closer look at the data. Um, so this is the mass, th three different runs, three times 22 samples. And we look at the mass of the uh, center of the empty peak. And here you can see that they are really nicely overlaying. In fact, when we plot it like this, um, each of these series represents 22 data points. Uh, we have um, a standard deviation um, of or a CV of um, better than 2% in all cases. We also looked at the empty full ratio. Um, actually, we used two different samples. One was um, about 75% full and the other one about 32% full. And again, we ran 22 data points. We measured 22 data points and we saw a CV of better than 10% um, for, for these repeats. Now I would like to speak about uh, two case studies that were performed at one of our industrial um, Samux Auto beta testers. Um, the beta testing is, is currently going on and this is the data we received. So they also looked at a purification process um, and here you can see the profile of the different um, illusions. You can see that it's a stepwise illusion um, and the system, the, the process was monitored using UV, so UV 260 and 280 for protein and DNA. And then the ratio gives you an, an information about the um, DNA content. So basically a ratio below 1.1 means it's mainly empties and uh, above 1.1 means uh, they are full particles. So according to this, um, the highest one should be B1. So they took four of these samples and ran them on a mass photometer uh, using the Samox MP auto. Uh, what I'd like to underline here is that the fractions could be loaded directly onto the well for the analysis without any dilution, any buffer exchange, any sample preparation. Um, it just so happened that the concentration was in the right range. Otherwise you would need to dilute. Um, but here, yeah, they, they got lucky. They could put it directly on the mass photometer. Um, and you can see that here I plotted again this, the fraction and the UV ratio that was received, um, and also the measurement, the, the full ratio that we got from the mass photometer. So firstly, you can see that the it really nicely matches, right? The lower this um, UV ratio, also we see the filling ratio is lower, corresponding really well. Um, but you get much more information also from the mass photometer measurement. You see that there's very few partials. So it seems to be a really clean probe in that, um, from that respect. Also, we see a few um, overfill particles here. And so this, this higher mass um, contamination. And this entire measurement took them about 30 minutes to confirm the um, full rate filling ratio from the UV measurement. But now they were thinking, Maybe we don't need seven steps as we had before. Maybe we can optimize the system um, in the process and only use two steps. Basically one to capture all the empties and then another one to capture all the full. Here's the result from the um, UV. It suggests that indeed this worked. Um, we have mainly empty in the first one and mainly full on the, in the second one. Now, uh, these two samples were, uh, the fractions were measured on the mass photometer. And now we see something interesting where it, we can confirm that um, step one has mostly empty particles and step two has mostly full. However, now we see a significant amount of partials. Uh, those were pos possibly uh, AVs that beforehand would be washed out in earlier elutions. But now because there's only one step elution for the empties, they come out here. So we can see the partials um, and also we see an increased amount of uh, overfilled for the full ones, right? Because again, there we also only had one big illusion step where everything that is quite um, big came off. Um, so yeah, I think this, these are really interesting results showing what the system is, is capable of um, in order to optimize your process, but also in this case, um, 
it gives you the insight that you may need to further optimize the process um, and have maybe more than just two steps. This is something that you cannot just get from the uh, UV measurements. And it just takes you literally uh, a few minutes to, to get to this result. Uh, another case study that we received from this collaborator is that they looked at two different, well, the same vector produced in two different manufacturing protocols. Um, what they have observed is that vector A showed lower transgene activity after transduction compared to, to vector B at, at the identical uh, vector um, BG titer doses. When they put them on the mass photometer, they could see. Um, the reason for that here, the, the vector A, sorry, the, the production A, um, shows a large amount of um, partials, whereas the vector B is, is very clean. So these measurements with the mass photometer, um, they are in line with the um, QC and the functional assays that they performed, but you can get to this information very, very quickly in literally just minutes. Um, and it just shows nicely shows that you can, during your process development, quickly compare two different um, approaches in the mass photometer and get a really meaningful um, information out of it. So we also supply um, consumables with the system for your um, ease of use and for also for in uh, increased data confidence. So what you would get with the system is um, one of these um, alignment tools where you can put the silicone um, sample holder in, the sample well cassette. And uh, what is shown here is 14. Uh, the new system will actually be able to measure 24. So there will be 24 of these wells. You then take one of our um, mass glass pre-cleaned slides uh, and they fit the, the slide fits in here and you end up with this um, nicely aligned uh, sample well cassette on the glass slide and then you're good to go. We also um, will provide soon a calibrant um, that's coming in mid 2023. It's called Masterens P2. What it is, is a protein that gives a peak at 3,640 kilo Dalton. So it can be nicely seen here, which is nicely in the range where the AAVs also are located. Um, and we just use a one point calibration with this and zero um, to calibrate the system that you get your information in, um, in mass rather than contrast. We can do that because we have a really nice linear relationship all the way from zero kilodalton to 4,000 um, kilodalton as shown here. So we've, we've uh, applied this um, calibration to four different measurements of different masses um, and they are really nicely linear. So this, the, it's good enough to use a one-point calibration to get to very accurate results. Also coming in the future, um, that something I'm really, really excited about is the first GMP compliant instrument that Refine brings to the market. And this will be the Samux MP and the Samux Auto. So coming in Q3 2023, we'll have a GMP compliant software. That means it's 21 CFR 11 compliant in the US or Annex 11 elsewhere. Um, for both the Samux MP and the Samux MP Auto so that the system can be used all throughout the value chain of um, your product. So with that, I'd like to sum it up. Um, I hope that I could show you that the Samux MP Auto um, leads to precise AV empty full ratios within minutes for any serotype at many minimal operational costs. It can measure up to 24 samples autonomously uh, in approximately one and a half hours with high repeatability. And Samux MP Auto can be applied at different purification, purification stages, but also suitable from it's also suitable from R&D all the way through to manufacturing. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm really happy to receive your questions. And if you'd like to get in contact, please write uh, sphere.cheesman at refine.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Svea. Fantastic presentation. I really appreciate your time today. Um, I'm starting to see some really great questions populate from our audience. So I'd also like to thank our audience for their participation.
Before we do begin with our question and answer session, I just wanted to remind our audience how they could submit questions if they have not already done so. You can submit your questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found directly below the video player. So Svea, I'm reviewing some of the questions that have come in. And our first question, which kind of molecule do you use to calibrate the SAMEX MP to be able to measure AAV and AAV aggregates? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Um, I think it came very late in the presentation. So we will supply our, um, our own calibrant um, mid next year, which is a one point calibration. Um, for now, if you have the SAMEX MP, we recommend to just use empty AAVs. They typically come out at a 3,750 kilodalton and use that as a one-point calibration, and then um, you, can, you can use the system. Thank you. Another question that comes in that I find very particularly insightful, Maybe you can talk a little bit more about mass photometry measuring AAV as a buffer containing iodoxinol. Oh yeah, that, that's a question that we get a lot. Um, I think some of the technologies out there cannot measure um, when there's iodoxinol in the system, in the buffer. Um, we have measured um, up to 20% iodoxinol um, and we can still measure the empty full ratio. However, it does have an effect on the um, on the um, signal to noise ratio. So we recommend to keep it um, as low as possible. We can measure up to 20%. Uh, keep also in mind that we measure at a very low concentration of uh, 10 to the power of 11 particles per milliliter. So typically, once it comes off the purification, you have to dilute it uh, at least tenfold. Um, so this also dilutes diodexanol. Great. And, um, you know, talking more about AAVs and measurements, is there an upper weight limit for analysis and can this be applied to bigger particles? Uh, unfortunately, there is. Um, so I, I guess when we when people ask about bigger particles, um, we speak about lentiviruses, adenoviruses, uh, other viruses. Um, they are unfortunately too big and too heavy for the system uh, to measure. We can only resolve uh, viruses that are about the, the same size and weight of AAVs, which is 25 nanometers and about 4 megadalton, um, much higher than 6 megadalton. We, we can't resolve. Great, thank you. Well, I should yeah. mention though that, sure. apologies, I should mention that we, we're looking into that and we hopefully bring a system to the market next year, towards the end of next year. Okay. Um, SAMIC will not be the right system for that. And you know, talking about what else is going on, will there be an option to upgrade with existing uh, materials to purchase auto? Absolutely. Yeah, we kept that in mind when designing the system. Um, any Femex MP in the field can be upgraded with the automation solution. Um, no problem. Thank you. And uh, sorry to, to add that. Um, also, any system in the market will be upgradable to the GMP uh, compliance software, both the, the SAMUXs and the SAMUX autos. Here's a question that I find this is a good question uh, regarding time consumption. What is the hands on time when using the auto? Uh, for example, they highlighted 25 samples. Yeah. Um, so what you need to prepare in order to run the, the robot is you um, have to obviously make sure that you have piper tips, um, so put those in. Um, you have to prepare your 96 well plate um, that uh, must contain the buffer that you want to use if you want to dilute right before the measurement um, and the samples. So you need to prepare that, put that in the system manually. And you also, um, I, I think I showed this process of assembling the slides where you put the silicone mask onto a glass slide that takes, uh, I guess, about a minute. Um, and then you need to put that into the system. Um, so I would think it's a preparation time, depending on the amount of samples we have of five to 10 minutes. Um, you need to program the protocol, of, tell the, the robot what to do and which, which, in which order to measure what samples. Um, and then you can walk away. Um, so I would think it really depends on, you know, the extent of what you want to do. It should be about 10 minutes uh, preparation time. Thank you. And uh, are there any buffer background requirements? Um, 
so we have tested most buffers that uh, AAVs typically come in, and we haven't seen any problems with anything. As I mentioned, even iodixanol uh, can still be measured. Um, there are some buffer components that can interfere with mass photometry, anything that scatters a lot. Um, but for AAV, typical buffers, we have not seen any restrictions. For upstreaming, what is the minimum uh, quantification range we need to know about? Mm, I'm not 100% sure what that, that refers to. We have, we have um, a minimum concentration range, um, which should not drop below 10 to the power of um, 10, I would think. Um, we also have a limited um, range in terms of mass. So the lower mass range is 500 kilo Dalton. Uh, so below that, we cannot really resolve the system well. Um, in terms of the empty full ratio, we can resolve the entire uh, range. Great, thank you. And do we need to have different instruments for measurement of monoclonal antibodies versus AABs, or will one instrument suffice? Now that's a tricky one. Um, if you if you want to have the highest resolution, we recommend to use uh, the two MP for antibody work and the SAMX MP for AAVs. You can use the 2MP, which is um, an instrument that has a range of 30 kilodalton to 5 megadalton. So you can use that for AAVs. The resolution, however, will be better on the SAMX MP. With high res MS, uh, you might see some different distinct populations of partially filled species, obviously not just a smear. Um, is Refine working on improving resolution? Um, I'm not 100% sure what the question is. So, uh, of that, we do expect the partial population to be a smear, not, not a well defined population. And we do have baseline resolution between the empty and the full. So, we can resolve it pretty well. I'm not, uh, maybe, maybe I don't get the question quite correctly. So, please um, get in touch if, if that's the case. Um, but we think that what we are resolving in terms of partials is the amount of partials that are in the system. And as a single particle technique, what is the typical number of particles being counted in an experimental histogram? Yeah. So, what we, what we look at, um, is we see particles when they land on the surface. Um, we then take a video of that. Um, we take a video typically of about one minute, um, and we analyze in that typically a thousand to three thousand molecules. So that is um, in one field of view. Um, so that's the the number of molecules that you get for one, one measurement. So Faye, maybe you can talk a little bit about how well the instrument revolves. Uh, resolves, excuse me, empty or full content from the crude samples? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as shown in, in the, the slide on the different purification uh, steps, we can measure samples in process um, right after clarification. It should be mentioned that um, the resolution is higher, the purer the, the, the sample is, right? So it really depends a little bit what you're after. If you want to have a rough idea of the empty full ratio, um, you can certainly get that from um, after the clarification. Um, if you want to see partials and overfilled and, and really details of your product, you will need to purify the product. Thank you. I can't, I'm blown away at all of the questions coming in, Spaya. Your presentation is obviously uh, striking a lot of great questions here today. How significant is the contribution of this technology to achieving the purity and safety of our AAV preparations? Well, I, uh, that's a tricky one because I, I might be biased there. But uh, I, I, yeah, joke aside, I, I think this technology can really change uh, the field significantly because for the first time now researchers are able to quantify their, um, analyze their AAVs very early in the process when they don't have a lot of material and they don't have a high concentration. Um, the Samux MP is a system that can be used in-house um, by any operator really um, and uh, with very low sample requirements. So it's, I, I think it will help to understand the process better in the, the, the R&D and process development stage and therefore develop um, safer and better drugs. 
Now, going back to your actual slide presentation, I'm sorry, unfortunately, I can't pull that slide up at the moment, but what was the quality of the samples that you compared back on slide 11 um, or in your presentation? Uh, have you used an in-process sample? Um, yeah, so I, I think slide 11 is the, the slide where we show benchmarking um, with AUC and TEM. Um, and in both cases, the, sam the samples were uh, purified. Um, they also have to be because you need such a high concentration to even be able to measure TEM samples. Um, so they were purified samples. We have not done benchmarking on um, in-process samples, but we have measured in-process samples. Uh, someone on our audience wants to just confirm uh, you can use one empty AIV as a reference for calibration. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we, we can do one point calibration and we recommend to use either a commercially available empty AIV capsid or one that you have in-house as a standard. And as mentioned, um, mid, mid next year, we'll, we'll bring our own calibrant to the market. It's hopefully going to um, uh, help you make, make the ease of use uh, even higher. Working capsid to the range. Yeah, so we're because we're a single molecule technology, we're really uh, sensitive to concentration. Um, the concentration must be low enough that we um, see single molecules binding to the surface, but it also has to be above a certain um, lower limit so that we get enough statistics to to give you a reliable result. Um, so we give an optimal concentration of 10 to the power of 11. Um, you can possibly go an order of magnitude up and down, um, but not more than that. And uh, an audience member just wants to clarify that the auto functionality can be added to a usual SAMX MP later on, correct? That's correct. It's already available. We do have some time for some more questions, uh, so I'm going to continue, Svea, as long as that's okay with you. Sure. Uh, I know we started talking a little bit about resolution before. What limits the resolution power? <laughs> uh, now, this is a real physics question. Um, so we think that the mass photometer is, is short noise limited. Um, so it, 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 it's obviously, you know, things that you can do on your side is um, the purification of the, the sample, right? The purer, the better the resolution. Um, obviously, the, we, cannot, we can only push the resolution to a certain um, limit. Um, it, at some point, it's actually the sample that limits the resolution. So a, a bad sample will look bad no matter what the resolution is. Um, so the purer the sample, the better the resolution on the system, um, the limitation comes from the, the shot noise. Can be tuned for different matrices. Sorry, come again. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Can the system be tuned for different matrices? Uh, the audience member mentioned that for an example, non-viral polymer vectors rather than just viral vectors. Um, yeah, it, um, it, it, for new applications, it's good to get in touch. It, it really depends a little bit on what the material is there. Um, but uh, generally, yes. So you can measure in different buffers and we can measure different molecules as long as they are in the, the range of, um, of the scope, which is between 500 kilodalton and 6 megadalton. If you can just remind the audience when this uh, is being released. Mm -hmm. So the SAMX MP, the, the uh, manual instrument, is on the market already. The automation uh, will be available in Q1 next year. So the first delivery is coming out in, in March 2023. Thank you. And, you know, as we start to think about next year and future plans, are there any plans in the work to utilize this technology for other viruses in the future? Uh, yeah, the technology, yeah. The instrument, no. So it, um, we are looking into um, lipid nanoparticles and the bigger viruses such as adenoviruses and lentiviruses, um, but they will not be uh, measured on the SAMX and P that they will need their dedicated system. And um, we hope to bring something to the market uh, by the end of next year. Utilizing this technology, how do you know that you are uh, in the right concentration range? Do you evaluate the statistics, the raw counts, something else? 
Uh, yeah, we, we can quickly see whether you are in the right concentration range. Um, so firstly, you can always use orthogonal methods um, to get an idea of your capsid title. Um, but uh, we can see in the system um, whether how many molecules land on the surface. You can literally see that on the chip. So we can also see whether the concentration is too high or too low. An experienced user can, uh, and you will be trained on that um, when you get a system. Someone in the audience mentioned that they have a six well cover and they wanted to know, can the 24 well cover also be used with the non-auto technology? Um, yeah, uh, that's a question we get a lot, a lot and unfortunately the answer is no. Um, that is because we had to optimize both the, the range of the stage, but also the, the use of oil um, in order to run through 24 samples. And only the robot is able to do that. Uh, so on manual systems, unfortunately, you cannot measure one slide with 24 samples. And is there any interference of high salt butter on the analysis? Um, as mentioned before, we have not encountered a buffer that caused, caused a lot of problems. We always recommend, um, if, if, especially if you have a, um, you know, a, a new buffer or like something that causes problems elsewhere, to just run the buffer as, as one experiment to see whether it creates noise or something, um, and then run the buffer with the, the sample. Um, we have not seen that, um, but, but yes, I guess if you go to extremely high salt concentrations, we, we would see issues there. Um, but it, again, the, the working ranges that we have seen with AAVs, we have not had any problems. Thank you, Svea. And it does look like we are almost out of time. I'm going to conclude with two more questions here. Uh, the first is in regard to overfill populations. And this might be something that's just more of your opinion, but do you feel that maybe these are mosaics and not just the typical overpacking? Hmm. I'm not a kind of sure what's meant by that. It's like some sort of dimerization or so. Um, with, with mass photometry, we get the mass at which they come out, right? So if, if that was, um, so, so firstly, I should say, we don't interpret the data, right? We, we only measure um, what's in there. And the, the great thing about mass photometry, but also sometimes the caveat, is that it sees everything. So when we see something there, it's very likely that it actually is there. Um, now, what it is, it is, is really up to you to, to determine this. Um, we think um, it could not be a homodimer or heterodimer, because the mass is not correct, right? You would then expect the mass of above seven megadalton. Um, and as mentioned, the, it was um, it was analyzed and they found that it's, it, it has two times the, the genome. But uh, it could be something else. So we, we don't we don't uh, tell you what it is that you're seeing. We, we just tell you what we're seeing. Thank you. And our last question, what are you hoping to characterize with the AAV aggregate? Um, and will this technology be able to differentiate the number of empty versus full versus partial capsids? Empty, full versus partials in aggregates, I'm assuming, because yes, obviously yeah. it does that uh, outside of aggregates. Um, well, theoretically, it, 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 so we, we don't know at this point how well we do on aggregation, right? Um, so um, what we, what the question was, I think also, what, what do we expect um, to see, we would like to exp um, to be able to quantify the percentage of aggregation that you see in the in the system, and ideally also say what sort of aggregates you have. You know, is it two, three, four, five, ten um, AAVs? Um, theoretically, and this is super theoretical, you should be able to say whether it's a full or empty based on the mass, right? Because, um, but it's like it's likely that at this high range we don't have the resolution. So I, I guess, no, we will unlikely see the, the difference between empty, full, and partials inside aggregates. And I know I said we were done, but we're still hearing from our audience. So let's at least wrap up and try to respond to this last question that just populated uh, regarding scattered light. Uh, how does scattered light change partial field baryons? And can we think about the various species? Sorry, you moved away from the mic there. Can you repeat the question, please? Oh, I'm sorry. So in regards to uh, changes to scattered light, uh, how does this occur with partial fill uh, baryons? 
Okay, so um, I guess uh, the question is whether we can we can resolve the the, the partials. Uh, there must have been yeah. a question that came up rather early in the in the presentation because I, I think we've shown a lot of data. So yes, we 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 can resolve um, the empty, full, and partials based on the amount of scattering that they give us. Yeah. Thank you so much. I do want to thank again our audience. I can't think of the last time I had questions flooding in so quickly, Shreya. Uh, so your presentation was well received today. Uh, I do want to remind our audience that if they did not submit a question throughout the broadcast, you can still submit afterwards. Uh, Spay and our team will receive any questions that come in at a later point, and they'll be happy to review the questions and respond, respond excuse me, offline. That said, um, we are out of time, and I want to thank everybody for their participation. Obviously, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Refine, and our presenter, Dr. Svaya Cheeseman, for making today's educational webcast possible. Uh, we'd kindly like to ask our audience if they'd participate in a brief survey. The survey will populate automatically after the presentation has ended. You'll also receive an email alerting you when the webcast will be available for replay. And we invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Saya, Refine, thank you again for your time today. Thank you again to our audience. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.